Hey guys, so a week ago, I got my A-level maths results and I got an A-star, which is very cool because I only did it in one year, even though that's like not offered at my school. So I really just wanted to kind of recount my experience, give some tips for anyone else who is gonna do A-level maths. But I did talk to my friend about this beforehand and then she reminded me, yeah, I am very dedicated and also probably insane. So really sorry if this doesn't actually help anyone, but here is my experience of A-level maths and the things I thought were useful. Yeah. Okay, so here is just the little flex time. Flex time because basically what are the circumstances of me getting an A-star? Um, so we'll start at the beginning. My school doesn't offer GCSE for the maths, but we do have this like program called Hecate Maths that we use, which has like all the content up to GCSE maths. And I finished that a year early at the start of year 10 because I was bored in lockdown, basically. Everyone always laughs at me for that, but it's true. So I finished that a year early and then one of my friends at a different school was doing further maths and I was really annoyed that she was doing further maths because I thought I was like the best at maths or whatever because I had a big ego. So I was like, right, I'm going to convince my teachers to let me do further maths. So I taught myself the maths GCSE in year 11 and then I got like a 9 in it. It was in 2020 but I literally got 95% in the test so I knew what I was doing even if I thought I didn't because I swear to god I did not understand anything about matrices. Anyway that was the end of year 11 and I used to be just really bored in math lessons. I had this maths teacher who needs to make us do the easiest questions and I hated it so I was like okay I'm not having that again so I convinced my form tutor who was also the head of maths who I was like if I learn the first year of A-level maths, will you let me skip straight to year two? So that's what I did. Basically, I skipped to the second year of A-level maths. I couldn't make literally over half of the lessons in the end because they were sitting at the same time as my French lessons and my geography lessons, which was great. But actually it was for reasons I'm gonna get into later. I did the year 13 stuff with the content that was available because we have iPads in my schools. Everything was available for if you weren't there on our iPads on OneNote. Did the A-level, was kind of panicking to be honest. I did not think I was gonna, gonna do that well, get my A-star. I thought I might get an A. Um, I only scraped it in the mock and then I got the second highest score out of everyone in my school who sat in the maths so yeah pretty cool <laughs> okay so now on to the actual video and like tips and tricks uh, what I learn about learning whilst doing um, A level maths which fucking love learning about learning a most interesting part so yeah I've basically been self-teaching myself maths for the past like four years to be honest since about year nine which has been pretty cool but it does require a lot of motivation but that's something that I'm just kind of insane sometimes um and uh, yeah <laughs> but also just kind of about me I'm not very organized I literally refuse to do the organized stuff like in chemistry um, our teachers like go through the specification and write revision notes for things and make flashcards. I refuse to do that. I just basically do past papers, um, <laughs> basically. But what I have learned is it's really important that you do go through everything. For me, I just like questions. Love myself some questions. But you need to make sure you do understand everything. So first piece of advice, make sure you understand everything. That's gonna be very different for different people. So for example, me, because I was self-teaching myself most of the stuff, our lessons were an hour and 15 minutes long, but on average, I would spend about an hour and 45 minutes on a lesson, which was so useful. The hardest topics I found were the ones I'd actually get to a lesson and we'd be going so fast, I'd have no idea what was going on. But when I could go through it slowly, like properly compute it, I found it so much easier. So make sure that you properly understand each topic and then it just makes things so much easier later. If you don't understand it now, how the hell are you going to understand it later? You have to do so much more work. So that's the most, one of the most important things we found. Secondly, make sure you go through everything, like I said. So what I always do, I always get some sort of revision guide, some sort of question booklet that goes through everything. I love the AQA, like CGP books that like revision, not revision guides, but they're like workbooks that you can get where you go through everything. Lots of past papers and, and my school subscribed to Integral, which I know a lot of people do. And then I just did all those section tests for that. Find lots of ways to make sure you get things and then you get lots of different resources to do them differently. <laughs> okay, my third piece of advice is kind of contradictory. Well, it's going to be like 3A and 3B. So 3A, don't rely on your teachers. In like GCSE and below, you can kind of just be like, oh, my teacher's gonna spoon feed me this. Honestly, this applies to like all the other subjects to be honest, but you can kind of just be like, I'll just get told what to do. 
no you're not going to you have to do it yourself you have to be like uh what am i gonna do do i know this do i not know this properly you have to learn yourself for me lockdown was great for that because i I learned what didn't work for me, what did work for me, and just really be motivated to work out what you need to do, what you not need to do. 3B is rely on your teachers because they're gonna help you. Being able to go to like, extra maths clubs, being able to email your teachers is such a, an, a really incredibly important resource. But also being able to look at revision guides, etc. Uh, at my school, we have this like little maths office, which is uh, connected to a little small room where A-level students can like practice in. And that was really important for me just to go and do work there because there'd usually be a teacher who could answer my questions. And obviously revision guides are great, have lots of different resources that you use that will probably something will be able to tell you. But for specific questions, you can't be a teacher being like, this is how you do it. This is, this is what's going on here. Number four is create just some kind of routine for how you're gonna revise maths or we'll just do maths in general. So for me, like I said, I couldn't get to all the maths lessons I had, but I was timetabled for normal maths lessons. So I would just sit there and make sure I went to, well, I didn't go to all of them to be honest by the end, but generally I went to all the extra maths lessons. And I would sometimes go to further maths lessons and sit in when I had spare, like free periods and just do maths. So find time that you can always do it. I also used to do stuff on the bus. One extra little Ella snippet, was that I used to have playlists that I would listen to from start to finish. I would never shuffle them. Um, in fact, I did try and shuffle them, but I, I would just give up. I know one song that was third towards the end, and if I heard it like earlier, I would just give up at that point because that was like my signal for 10 minutes left of this. So I started with, I had a playlist that was 23 minutes long, and then I had one that was 27 minutes long, then 36 minutes long, and then 43 minutes long, and then an hour and seven minutes long. I would just go through that to make sure I was doing that amount of time early ones for like on the bus and then the later one was for my hour and 15 minute lessons I would use the hour and seven minutes one but that was like kind of revision by that point and I found that really useful because it was just really great motivating I can link some of those playlists if people care maybe not all of them actually pretty embarrassing they were generally like <laughs> dream SMP vibe playlists not gonna lie, not gonna lie. What we were listening to whilst writing Pebble Brain was literally, I, like I listened to that and I'm like, this is A-level maths. This is A-level maths right here. <laughs> okay, advice number five. Editing Ella here. So I didn't actually explain what fifth piece of advice is, which is very ironic because the fifth piece of advice is create systems, like writing stuff down so you know what you've done and what you've got to do, because this is exactly what I don't do in this like segment of advice. It's a mess all over the place, but yeah, create systems so you know what you've said and what you're going to say so you know what you've done and what you've got to do because you will thank yourself for it very much if you do it and you will dislike yourself very much if you don't like me right now editing this video honestly all these kind of advice kind of just link to each other i really like things that are, i know what i have to do and then i just wake up and i'm like okay this is what i'm gonna do um i, I don't honestly i don't know what this advice is i, I this is just blab. I didn't set up and I didn't make a list of like, this is all gonna be. This is just, yeah. So, like I said, finding books that you can go through are really helped me. Just to know I'm gonna start here and end here. Or, like I said, going on the bus, be like, okay, every day on the bus I'm gonna do this. And just find little ways to motivate yourself. And like the playlist thing, I would be like, okay, I get to listen to a fun playlist, listen to good songs, and they would kind of motivate me to finish, get all the way to the end. Okay, to be honest, uh, that's all the advice I have. I kind of was just, I just did it. Like, I just really enjoyed doing A-level maths, to be honest. And, oh, one last piece of advice. Don't do the easy stuff. Seriously, if you're bored, you ain't gonna do nothing. Find hard questions. For me, it was just skipping AS level. I swear to God, I, I didn't learn any of the stats or mechanics. I just kind of showed up to year 13 lessons. I was like, yeah, I know what's going on here. I don't even do physics, but it doesn't really matter just like do the hard stuff and then if you're really stuck go back but when you get presented with a topic obviously understand it but don't waste your time on easy textbook questions because it's just like it's pointless you're gonna hate it it's boring i like making things a challenge maybe that's just me because like i said i'm probably a bit insane or something i'm gonna be doing four a levels next year anyway that'll be fine yeah on top of the, the maths i've already done that'll be fine in total anyway just have fun with it find ways to enjoy it and honestly 
isn't I was gonna say it's not as hard as you think it is but it probably is as hard as you think it is but you just have to keep going I personally just love maths I think it's really fun just to keep on having going at questions and then doing harder ones and then harder ones and then your knowledge builds up and right after this I'm gonna go watch that series of the es essence of linear algebra to get my head around vectors but go for it you can do it you can do it just keep working hard do the hard stuff don't get bored and just keep keep doing maths keep doing maths